How's it going everyone? This is Tony here and in this video I'm basically going to talk about the different types of mixed race people and my experience as a mixed race man. Now as I've said in other of my videos I acknowledge that I am mixed race. Part of my ancestry is white, part of my ancestry is black, part of my ancestry is Native American, and part of my ancestry is even from Mexico. But at the end of the day, I identify as a Native American. If you were to ask me, what's your race? I would say I'm a mixed blooded Indian. When I say mixed blooded, that's me acknowledging all the other things in my blood, but at the end of the day, I'm an Indian. Now, I'm gonna tell you how I came to that decision in, in a little bit, but first, I just want to say that for you non-mixed people out there, I'm gonna just break it down for you how we mixed race people process things. There's the race that you acknowledge, and then there's the race that you embrace. There's a difference between acknowledging and embrace. Somebody could be well aware of the fact that they are ethnically mixed, but they may only embrace one of those races. They may acknowledge all the other ones, but at the end of the day, what they call themselves, what they see when they look in the mirror, may be just one or only some of their races. For example, you might have someone who's half black and half white, who grew up around their white family, didn't really grow up around their black family. They look mostly European, and so they call themselves white, and they embrace their white side. Now, they might acknowledge that there's black in them, but at the end of the day, what they would identify as is white. But on the flip side, you might have somebody who's mixed with white and black who will say that when they look in the mirror, they see their African features, and they might acknowledge that white is in them, but at the end of the day, they would call themselves black. So there's a difference between what you acknowledge versus what you embrace. There's some mixed people out there who will embrace one race, acknowledge the other. There's some that'll embrace both equally, but then there's this crazy group of mixed race people who will only acknowledge one of their races and they'll pretend that the other one's not even there. Like, and I'm sure you've seen this before. Somebody who calls themselves black but you look at them, their skin is white as can be. They've got a pointy nose, soft curly hair and small lips. And they wanna look at you and say, I'm just black. What do you mean? I'm not white, I'm just black. Listen folks, if you're like that, you don't hate white people, you hate yourself and you need to get over it because life is too short to be walking around like that. There's no reason to just be walking around hating yourself. Now, in my experience growing up, I did not know about my racial admixture. I didn't really think of myself as a race. What kid does? Kids just walk around just being a kid. They don't really think about themselves on racial terms until they get older and maybe would start asking a question or they have to fill out some sort of form for a test and they have to check a race. Then that's when the questions might start to come up. I found out about my ethnic background when I was in middle school. And further of it, I found out about my Mexican background after I had graduated from college. But looking at all of the pieces, it makes sense what my admixture is. Now, to start off, I wasn't always where I am now. When I was a small child, I didn't really have a race that I identified as. When I was in elementary school, I had self-hatred because of my appearance, and I'm gonna tell you why. When I was in high school, I started to see myself as just a mixed race person. And then when I became an adult and got out into the world, I realized I'm Indian and Hispanic, basically. I'm Native American and Hispanic. So let me just walk you through my journey and how I came to that, to that decision. You see, I embrace my Native American ancestry and I acknowledge the other ones. If I were to fill out a form, I would check, when they say, are you Hispanic Latino? I check yes. Then when they tell you to check your race, I check Native American and then I'm done filling out that part of the form. I used to check everything when I was in high school, but I no longer do that. So let's get started. When I was in elementary school, I didn't really identify as any particular race. However, Washington DC where I grew up was a fairly segregated environment. And when I say segregated, I don't just mean black white segregation. You had Hispanics in there as well. And so I grew up in the Petworth area and my grandmother and my family I grew up with, which would basically be my grandmother and mother, frequented the Mount Pleasant area. And for those of you who are from DC and lived there in the 90s, you know that the Mount Pleasant area and the Petworth area are very high Hispanic 
population areas. But that's basically who I grew up around, Hispanic kids. Now, growing up in the Petworth area, I did have several black students. And these students would bully me for my appearance because of how I talked, because my skin was too light, and all these other things. Even my mother's boyfriend, one of the men that my mother dated at the time, she let this man basically try to demean me for how I brushed my hair because, you know, when I was a kid, I used to brush my hair backwards. Now, if you look at how I brush my hair, I brush the top to the side and I brush this side down. But anyway, there was an incident. This man, he's an African-American and he basically tried to demean me for having soft, wavy hair. He took a brush and ground it into my head roughly trying to scruff up my hair and make it take a kinky pattern and he made fun of me saying you got this stringy little white girl hair he said that to me when i was i believe in the third or fourth grade i was very young when he said that to me but that never left me but getting bullied by the african-american kids growing up you know physically bullied verbally bullied this started to make me internalize a self-hatred of that i was not good enough that I, there was something wrong with me. Beforehand, I had not really thought of myself as an ethnicity, but then at that point, they basically made me think I was defective. Now, the Hispanic kids were the ones that actually played with me a lot when I was a kid. They were the friendlier ones. They embraced me to a point, and I even started to sit around them and hear them speaking Spanish. And that is actually what got me interested in learning the Spanish language. You see, my Mexican ancestors moved here over a century ago and since that time the Spanish had completely gone away they had assimilated and become English speaking so I, I didn't really I didn't grow up in a Spanish speaking household so what basically happened was I began to have more of a camaraderie more of a warmth with the Hispanic children and then this proceeded into my middle school career I remember times in middle and high school where old Hispanic ladies las viejas would walk up to me asking me for directions in Spanish. Fortunately, because I paid attention in Spanish class, I was actually able to answer them. And so also when I learned more Spanish out on the street than I did in the textbook. And that's the lesson, folks. If you wanna learn Spanish, if you wanna learn any language, go speak with the native speakers of that language. You'll learn way more than in a classroom. In the classroom, the teacher has curriculum objectives. They have data they need to meet. They have to go through the curriculum pacing guide. They may not have time to stop and teach you every little detail. But if you wanna really learn it, get out in the street, make the mistake of saying something incorrectly, be humble enough to take their correction when they show you the right way to say that word, profit, you learn the language. So over time, I began to feel more of a kinship more of a closeness with Latino kids. I began to even think of myself as, no, I'm not too far removed from these Latino kids. We kind of look alike. We're the same skin color. We have a similar background. I did not know that I was also of Mexican heritage at that time. My grandmother did not reveal that to me until after I was a grown man, married, working a full-time job, and it just happened to come up in conversation. But I digress. Let's get back to elementary school. In elementary school, I was bullied, again, as I was saying, by African-American kids, and they really did not want much to do with me. And to make matters worse, the boyfriend my mother had at the time, who she later on went to marry, was very pan-Africanist. He was very, he barked at me and would yell, this is a pro-black household, and if you don't identify as black, you need to get your ass whooped. Because there, there's this group out there of people who in their mind, if part of your ancestry is black, it doesn't matter how small that part is, you have to identify as black. And that is frankly BS. That is just a garbage argument. It holds no weight. And I'm going to give you a very short and brief explanation why. In my experience of having conversations with people who try to force a mixed person to identify as black, they never really say anything positive about what it is to be black or african-american they normally just say something negative about other races their arguments are usually self-hating arguments here are the top two arguments that you as a mixed race person will probably encounter from a black person i'm not saying everyone about why you should identify as black number one they'll say because it doesn't matter how light your skin is white people will still hate you therefore you're black now that's a stupid reason because why am I letting my identity be determined by someone else's hatred? 
that's what self-esteem is for folks is that you realize that you're not just going to let somebody else dictate who you are just because they have an axe to grind so again that was a highly invalid argument and i saw no reason to go along with it then the second argument they make which is an utterly ridiculous argument is that they say well if you were around during the 1600s you would be on the plantation too and I, I don't have the words to describe how stupid this argument is number one black people weren't the only people on the plantation some white indentured servants weren't given their freedom when they were supposed to get it some native americans were kept on the plantation if they could not escape out west and so to say that the plantation equals black is a fiction because there were other ethnicities on the plantation heck during the Roman Empire, white people were slaves. So this argument that just, oh, black people, woe is me, smallest violin, black people are the only ones suffering, is just a garbage argument, and it has no weight, folks. It's just, it's basically just an emotional appeal to try to guilt trip someone out of acknowledging their white ancestry. And I'm sorry, you're not, you're not gonna guilt trip me into hating a part of myself. Like I said, life is just too short for that. So, when I became a 16 year old, I started doing more research into my Native American ancestry. And this caused such contention between my stepfather at the time and myself that my mother basically took his side, which of course, you know, he's, he's wealthy, so there you have it. Anyway, she took his side and she actually physically assaulted me when I was like 16 years old for refusing to renounce my white ancestry that's basically how the conversation went i she said well white people aren't going to accept you so why should you accept your white heritage and i told her two wrongs don't make a right and she punched me in the face and we ended up at the police station it was a big embarrassing sad scene to watch but that's what basically happened is that she was attempting to put me in my place as it were one of the arguments that she made as an emotional appeal to try to scare me out of identifying with my mixed race ancestry, she said, you should identify as black because when a white woman, when an old white woman sees you coming down the street, she's gonna clutch her purse and be afraid of you. And that white people are just gonna hate you. And you know what? I'm not speaking for all of you old white ladies out there, but in my experience, old white ladies love me. I remind them of their mixed grandson. It's not necessarily about how you look it's about how you carry yourself number one and number two the way i look is not even i don't i have never had the police tell me i fit the description i've never had that experience if anything when people look at me they don't even know what i am i've had people of all colors try to fi find out what i'm mixed with or try to inquire about what my ethnic ancestry is and so my experience has honestly not been one of black america what, whatever that is. My experience has been one of ethnically ambiguous, if anything. And a lot of you mixed race people out there, you understand what I'm talking about. You understand the stare. Someone's looking at you trying to figure out what you are. You understand the question, can I touch your hair? You've all been there if you're ethnically mixed like I am. So when I was in later on in my high school career and in my college career, I began to explore my Native American ancestry. I've had multiple Native Americans walk up to me and say, oh, you look like you have Native American in your background, what tribe are you from? And I would just tell them what my grandmother told me, that I have some Cherokee, some Apache, and some Blackfoot. That's what my grandmother told me, and she has no reason to lie. So I would just tell them that. I would just you know, be upfront about what's in my background. And as I found out later on, as an adult when I was 23 years old, my grandmother revealed to me that some of our ancestors came from Mexico, and that was the final piece put into place that made me realize that's why the Hispanic kids gravitated towards me when I was a child. That's why the older ladies walked up to me speaking in Spanish, is because in a way I look like them, and in a way I am them. But you know what? In a way they are me, and let me tell you why. Because of the fact that if you read the actual history of how what you call a Hispanic or a Latino person came about, here's what happened. The white Spaniards came to the Americas and intermixed with the Native American Aztecs, Mayans, Incas, and all the different tribes in South America. 
Then after that, the African slaves that were brought over mixed in with some of them. And so most Hispanic people are basically Native Americans that have some white and some black in them somewhere down the line. What am I? A Native American that has some white and some black in me somewhere down the line, and I happen to speak Spanish. So I'm basically a, a Latino Native American at the end of the day. So that's basically just been my experience of what group I found more in common with, what I saw when I looked in the mirror. Everyone who tried to tell me I was black failed to demonstrate a tribe in Africa that I actually resembled. But I was able to constantly find people of Native American ancestry or of Hispanic ancestry that I somewhat resembled. I even on a joke, this was a joke folks, I didn't take this seriously. I jokingly took a photo of myself and uploaded it to one of those apps that supposedly analyzes your race by looking at your face and whatnot. It told me I looked like I was Brazilian, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny, but no, I don't have any Brazilian in me to my knowledge. But anyway, that's been my experience, folks. It's just what I saw when I looked in the mirror, what languages I speak, and what group I found the most in common with. And at the end of the day, I found out that I was Indian, but hey, if you look like me, but your experience has had more in common with your white ancestors, you're white. If you look like me and your experience has been more in common with your black ancestors, you're black. It's your choice. The thing I would say is, as long as you acknowledge what you're made out of and don't hate yourself, and you don't use that as an excuse to hate other people, I would say then that's pretty much, you're good to go. It doesn't matter what you embrace, as long as you're not a racist. Anyway, that's my take on the mixed race experience. That was the short version of my experiences. Let me know what yours are in the comments below. Take care.